Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and I'm back. It's been a pretty difficult week or so. Um, on the bright side, I got a shout out in the New York Times. It's an article about the loudness war. Unfortunately, at the time this was happening, my website was down because they were upset about how much bandwidth I was using. So you will find me finding a uh, more appropriate web hosting thing that is underway. And it's back for now, so it should stand uh, the release of this plugin. It is called Halt. And I can show you what it does pretty easily. But wait, there's more. Check this out. Four poles. But wait, there's more insane residents. That's right. Now we've got a aura like thing which works on low frequencies, especially. I've got a level of um, the distortion uh, spiral in here. We can also just cut it way the hell down so that it's not hitting the distortion. And you can hear it's got this very analogy organic sound kind of thing. This is based on a algorithm that's used by accountants for forecasting trends called HALT. And the neat thing about it is that although it latches onto really low frequency waveforms super well like this, it is very, very, very simple. And I think that is borne out in the sound of it. It sounds as simple as it is. It is just a couple of different variables and interacting with each other. In other words, the Holt forecasting method. And an interesting thing that you'll find is that Though we can get these very sharp resonances, there's a couple of different ways to fade them down to nothingness. And one of them is simply to crank the frequency up all the way. As it's way up in the high frequencies, it doesn't generate the sharp resonant peaks that the low frequencies will do. And that's because this is not designed to be a filter. This is designed to be a forecaster of data sets and um, in order to get it to do this kind of thing, I messed with it rather fiercely. Otherwise, it would not hold the same frequency as you messed with resonance. Now, pulse is another thing. Pulse is the same thing I was doing in the Grooveware plugin, where there's four different um, instances of this, and you can dial it back to literally zero. From zero to one, you're putting one instance in. From one to two, you're going to two instances, and so on. So if you dial back poles to get your result, what you're doing is getting a less processed output, not just a like filter-shaped something like that. It's actually running less of the math. So with the single pole, you're not running as much of a uh, intensity in the resonance. Resonance of about 0 0.5 is pretty nice and plain sounding without a big resonant boost. Resonance is 0 is pretty much no boost at all. And I'll show you what resonance zero on poles cranked up is, because what this will do, and you can have it with uh, output. This is a way of getting that uh, DJ isolator effect. Although it's not a drastic kind, 
it has still got enough sharpness to it that it acts kind of like a very mellow, organic-sounding swoop up of frequencies. And this is very heavy cancellation. We got pretty much nothing but subsonics going on here. And then... But we can start including resonance to increase the rejection of these highs, because as you can see, we're still getting some. They're just extremely attenuated. And then as we bring a little resonance in, Actually, you know, I didn't cut off the highs as much as I thought, but still, we can take this output down, put the resonance up, and let's have a look at what that looks like. It's uh, very heavily rejected with high resonance. And yeah, so our high frequency resonance is a, our high frequency rejection is about the same. That's going to be governed by poles. And resonance is just adding the feedback effect. So in a way it's sharpening the cutoff because it's accentuating the cutoff point. And you can even see it around about here. So this ain't much of a high frequency filter and it's not going to throw big flashy resonances on there, but as you get into the mids, you can get some really sharp resonances and it's got very good rejection down low. And one of the things that uh, you'll find with that here, let's put bit shift gain on, uh, cut it way the heck down so that when I crank it way up with the resonance, again, this has the uh, spiral uh, clipper in it. So you can see what it's doing as far as throwing harmonics on because spiral is being slammed to within an inch of its life here. But one interesting side effect is that since it has such intense rejection of higher frequencies, Spiral's going to tend to resist going into uh, artifacts. Like, we're not getting a lot of artifacts simply because the intensity with which we're hitting the Spiral algorithm, kind of like this, the harder we hit, we start seeing these harmonics showing up. but they will tend to not generate harmonics that are so high that they're aliasing. Like the harmonics are very much not even hitting here. And if I increase the output, we'll start seeing more of them. But it's still resisting aliasing. You have to really go to uh, a very aggressive distortion in order to hear much in the way of aliasing. And even then, you're not really hearing that. We can sneak in a little dry wet. So yeah, I can put our, oh, I'll be showing you that in a moment. We'll go back to that. So this has a bunch of different ways to dial back to uh, clean. This is one of them. And if we go all down to flat and then all the way back up to clean. Another way is to use the poles. That's now dry again, because zero poles is dry.
and then of course dry wet goes to dry as well so that's three ways of doing it dry wet poles to zero or frequency to one as you can hear this is cranked out to the maximum extent and engaged so that if you had the output down it's at that setting but all the same with the frequency at one poles at zero or dry wet at zero it's just the same as dry again and lastly what we can do is show you Oh, that's a little harsh, isn't it? We're clipping this very harshly. So, or actually, no, we're not, but we could. Here, check this out. We'll turn it down that way. And that's what noise sounds like. Now, if the dude that has tried to... Um, copyright strike uh, raw noise on YouTube has something to match this, I'll be deeply, deeply shocked. I think I've got him uh, fooled with this one. Or, zero resonance. Get a nice thundery effect off of that check that out and that's only pink noise you could even do it with white noise but it would be more of a drop off as you go to the lower frequencies it's got a very nice quality of being able to suppress the highs to whatever degree you'd like and that's at four poles we can of course dial the poles back and voice it more or less however we like. Even. Adding a resonance effect. And the reason this responds smoothly to the manipulations of the control is that it's just two little parameters that are following each other. So it's got its own sort of anti-zipper noise thing going on. There's a smoothness about how it interacts. So we'll do an imitation earthquake now, just because we can. Our distortion will come in handy, and we're doing our bit shift gain to cut it down 6 dB so that I don't blow your speakers or anything. Wouldn't want that. Earthquake engage. Oh, we even want more. And that's very deep indeed. I should be cutting that back in a more exponential way. There you have it. Holt by Air Windows. The Holt algorithm is something that is well known by accountants and such for projecting trends and uh, one of my friends on the Q&A live stream has been repeatedly asking me, can I make a filter based on the Holt algorithm, thinking that it was going to be some kind of fuzzy low pass, that it would have something going on like that? Well, it's not a fuzzy low pass. But what it is, is pretty nifty. I wonder if I can actually play with something here. Let's give us a maybe somewhat attenuated and low frequency
square wave. We'll maybe cut the uh, volume back a little bit. Yeah, so we got a nice kind of synth effect going on here. Complete with a kind of grungy tonality being added. And that is a lot of resonance going on there. So let's take it back to about a 12 dB filter, because I think it's about 6 dB per octave. And as you can see, we've got our shiny harmonics, I mean a square wavy harmonics. Oh, let's have some fun with that needle pulse. One thing about that is that it is very lacking in high frequencies, so... We're not having the degree of boost that we had with the square wave. So that's a kind of cool noise. See, there's ways to get what you want out of this. And it's got a, it's doing a good job of hanging on to the anti-alias nature because the sign, the generator is generating it anti-aliased, and this is retaining it quite well. It has very good rejection of like stray ugliness in there, which we would plainly see it would be jumping right out. So yeah. Holt by Air Windows. I hope you have fun with this new filter. I think it's going to have all kinds of uses, and the source code is, of course, MIT licensed. So if you're making a synthesizer that's a bass synth and you need to be able to do a good job of resonating bass frequencies well, uh, use it and credit me. As I, you know, or you can use it and be like, implement your own version of Holt. I'm just the one that came up with a way of assigning a resonance to it, which is messing with the algorithm and plugging in new variables and things. And that stuff you can copy and just use if you are crediting me with the MIT license. And as you know, or maybe you don't know, I am supported by Patreon. So in order to be able to go and buy a web server that's not going to fall over when it gets hit by a few thousand hits a day, I've gotten up to about a thousand hits a day, and apparently that's enough to make a... Uh, lesser tier web host fall over. I'll just say that. Um, so I'm going to be spending money on a more awesome sauce web server, probably something along the lines of Amazon Web Services, because then I can scale it up until I'm the size of like the National Enquirer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, until I'm the size of like Reddit, which is not likely to happen, but... Um, that is one way to get in to something that will scale up and handle things as much as I need. And that's the thing, is giving stuff away to the extent that I'm giving it away. Because all these plugins are Patreon supported, so you can just use them. And if you find them super useful, please jump on the Patreon to the tune of about $50 per plugin that you find super indispensable per year. And doing that, you get infinite support and the source code and all kinds of other stuff that people don't usually give you for buying a plugin for $50. So it's, I think, a pretty good deal, but it is paying for the new web hosting. And I'm going to do my level best 
to do that because I'm very serious about being able to give useful tools to people who might need them and aren't doing enough revenue to be able to uh, get that out of third parties or commercial software or whatever. So yeah, it has been a really crazy couple of weeks, but uh, all the same, I'm pleased to be here back on my regular website and bringing another plugin. I didn't even miss a week. And this is a fun plugin to show you. Holt is really quite interesting. So for letting me continue to do this for all these years and get to the point where I can come up with this, which didn't exist a couple of weeks ago, thank you very much.